Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at intra-company transfer of depreciable asset. Well, in the prior recordings, we looked at the intercompany transfer of inventory, the intercompany transfer of land. And if you remember, inventory was a little bit more complicated than land. Land was the easiest because we don't have to deal with depreciation. Well, depreciable asset, guess what? By its nature, they have depreciation, like equipment, truck, building, and any long-lived asset. And here, when we say depreciable asset, you can include also intangibles, which are amortized but ne never nevertheless they are treated the same and the concept is the same whether we are transferring intercompany inventory or inventory land there are few things that we have to be aware of this one it's going to be a little bit little bit different but basically the same idea we have to defer any intercompany gain if there's any intercompany gain we're going to have to defer it we're going to have to re-establish historical cost so when we sell an asset to another entity that is that is related to us, It's which is part of the consolidated financial statement, we have to report everything at historical cost. We have to reestablish historical cost. And we have to recognize the appropriate gain in the consolidated financial statement. And specifically here, what's going to happen with depreciable asset, which you will see, which is something little different than inventory and land, is you're going to recognize the gain in piecemeal. It means gradually through depreciation. And we'll see this. So this point here is a little bit different and we'll see it when we work the example in a journal entry but deferring the gain deferring the intercompany gain and re-establishing historical cost this applied to inventory this applied also to land so that's always the case when we have a consolidated entity now the best way to illustrate this concept is to start to look to take a look at an example let's assume on january 1st year one adam company sells an equipment to ryan company now i'm not going to specify whether adam is the parent or Ryan is the subsidiary. I'll tell you the difference at the end. The selling price is 90,000. So Adam sold it for 90,000. Adam purchased the equipment for 100,000. This is the historical cost. And the equipment has accumulated depreciation of 40,000. What does that mean? It means if we have a historical cost of 100,000 minus, uh, minus 40, that's correct we have a book value of 60,000. That's the book value. Now we sold this asset. It has a book value of 60, sold for 90. It means from Adam's perspective on Adam's record, Adam will record a gain of $30,000. And this is an intercompany gain. Now this is what we're gonna be journalizing. And after we journalize, we have to see what's gonna happen after year one and after year two. Before we journalize the entries, I would like to remind you whether you are a student or a CPA candidate, and most likely you are either a student or a CPA candidate. You're looking for help. This is why you end up here. Great. I can help you along your CPA review course, along your accounting courses. This is a partial list of my accounting courses. I have lectures, multiple choice. That's going to help you understand the material organized by chapter and topic. My CPA resources are aligned with your backer. Roger, Wiley, Gleam. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I give you access to all previously released AI CPA questions, 1,500 of them with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Also take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation to see how people use my system to succeed in accounting and or CPA program. Like this recording, the mere fact that you are watching, you found me, it means it's helping you. Share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. And I started a CPA exam group me account. You can join there as well. So let's start to take a look at the journal entries, starting with the seller's record, which is Adam. So let's take a look at the journal entry. Sold the equipment, received cash from Ryan for 90,000. This is the selling price. We remove the equipment for 100,000. We remove, we remove accumulated depreciation for 40 and we book again on Adam's book. So this is Adam, the seller. Now the buyer's record, which is Ryan, Ryan will debit the equipment. That's how much they paid for it. 90,000 and they will credit cash 90,000. Now from an inter entity perspective, hopefully you know that we need to remove the gain we need to remove we need to re-establish the equipment uh, at historical cost which we'll deal with this in a moment however what i need to tell you is this asset has a remaining life of 10 years so from adam's perspective since it has a remaining life of 10 years the book value 
is 60,000 computed on the prior slide. Book value divided by 10. Adam takes 6,000 of depreciation per year. Now, on Ryan's book, Ryan's going to debit this uh, debit depreciation expense 9,000 because as far as Ryan's is concerned, that's his cost, which is also, you can say, his book value, which is 90 minus zero is book value, divided by 10 years remaining. Ryan will take 9,000 for the same depreciation, for the same asset. Well, what we can say is from a consolidated perspective, hopefully you see that we have 3,000 more in depreciation and we'll deal with that shortly. Now, let's go ahead and prepare the consolidated entry in the year of transfer. In the year of transfer, we need to get rid of the gain because this is an intercompany gain. We need to put the asset back to 100,000. So we need to add 10,000 here. We need to remove the gain. And we need to reestablish accumulated depreciation because we removed accumulated depreciation. Therefore, we debited the gain. So simply put, let me show you what we just did. So let me just show you the whole thing. Cash 90, cash 90 is gone. We credited the gain here. We're going to debit the gain. So we debited the gain. We reduced the gain. This gain is gone. Debit, equip, debit equipment 90, credit equipment 100. We're, we're missing 90,000 if we debit equipment 10. 10,000, this is the equipment is gone. So basically we debited equipment 9,000, uh, 10,000, and we need to remove accumulated depreciation. We credit accumulated depreciation. So this entry in the year of transfer, we, what we did is we removed the intercompany gain, the, the, the 30,000. And what we did also is reestablish the asset at 100,000 and we reestablished the accumulated depreciation. As we mentioned earlier that we have a 3000 of overstatement of depreciation. Here's what we're going to have to do. On a consolidated basis, depreciation expense is overstated. So this is not on the buyer's record. This is a consolidated statement. So uh, based on this is a consolidated entry. So basically we're going to reduce depreciation expense by 3000 and debit accumulated depreciation by 3000. So here's what I want you to see here. So we have accumulated depreciation was credited 40,000 to be reestablished. Now we debited this 3,000 on a consolidated. We are looking at 37,000. And what we did by reducing depreciation expense, remember when you reduce your depreciation expense, it means you increased your net income. When you increase your net income, it means you are increasing your retained earnings. What does that mean? It means you are starting to recognize some of that gain because you reduced you reduced your uh, expenses, increase your net income, and increase your retained earning. And this entry would repeat itself, uh, would repeat for the next 10 years. Why the next 10 years? Because we have a gain of 30,000. This gain, this gain of 30,000, if we divide it by 10, we're going to start to recognize 3,000 of it. And this is what I said earlier. We're going to be recognizing the gain in piecemeal. And this is what I meant by piecemeal for depreciable asset. Let's take a look at year two. Maybe it will clarify the point a little bit further. In year two, we're going to have to do the same thing. We're going to have to reestablish the asset uh, at 100,000, debit the equipment 10,000. We're going to have to debit retained earnings of the seller 27. Hold on a second. We so at the beginning, we debited gain 30,000. Remember, the gains goes into retained earnings. So in year two, we no longer have gain. We now it's, it's sitting in retained earnings. Also remember that from a consolidated perspective, we increase this retained earning by 3,000. In, in other words, we increased it by increasing net income. So in year two, in year two, what's going to happen is we're going to have to debit retained earning only 27 because we recognize on a consolidated basis, 3,000 of the gain. Why did we recognize 3,000 of the gain? Because the the buyer used that equipment to generate revenue. Now, the, the asset being consumed. So whether the asset being consumed or sold to an outsider, it's the same effect. Once it's consumed, it's consumed for the purpose of servicing the outsider. Therefore, we recognize 3,000 of profit. That's why in year two, we're going to debit retained earnings only 27, credit accumulated depreciation only 37. And I showed you why 37, because accumulated depreciation was 37. We need to be reestablished at 37. Now, if we're looking at year three, well, we're going to debit equipment 10,000. We're going to debit 
retained earnings well let's let's do the second entry first then we again we'll do the second entry and th this is a consolidated not the buyer's record but the buyer's record has 3000 of overstatement of expense so in year two we also remember we repeat this entry four ten times we credit depreciation expense debit accumulated depreciation now if we're looking at year three now i can show you year three better year three we're going to debit equipment ten thousand we're going to debit retained earning 24 because we recognize another 3000 of the gain and accumulated depreciation for this will be for year three year four year five year six until we use up all the gain or we sell all or we resell the asset to an outside party but this is what we have to do so hopefully you see how we are chipping away that 30000 now at the beginning i told you whether this is an upstream or a downstream it doesn't really matter but i was this was an upstream sale we assume it's an upstream sale this is what, how we do an us, upstream sale if this was a downstream sale downstream it means from the parent to the subsidiary rather than using the retained earnings we use the account called investment in sub investment in sub so that's the difference that you need to know whether it's an upstream or a downstream so at the beginning I did an upstream, which is we use retained earning. And these, the reason I say retained earnings, because it's harder to explain the retained earnings. And that's why I use the retained earnings. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com, work MCQs that covers this topic. That's going to reinforce what you just learned. Okay, you learned it. You understand it. Test yourself. So this way you are ready for your exam. You're ready for your CPA. And this way you know that you know the material. Don't shortchange yourself. Invest in yourself, invest in your accounting career. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.